Aloha, my name is Walfredo and I'd like to share my art with you. I was born in the Philippines in 1966. In 1972, my family moved to California, the Bay Area to be specific. And in 1993, I moved to Hawaii where I currently reside. I feel like I've had three different lifetimes and I want to share my experiences with you. I got my start from my father who is Edgardo F. Garcia. He was a well respected and well sought after art teacher in the Bay Area. He is a self taught artist and has a degree in teaching and psychology. When One day when his school was looking for an art teacher, um, he thought to himself, hey, I'm an artist, I could probably teach art, let me give it a shot. And that was the beginning of his artistic journey. From there, he would teach hundreds of people how to paint oil paintings and create masterpieces step by step. I was just one of his students. I felt like a fly on the wall when I sat in the back of his class and watched everybody learn what he had to teach. He was very charismatic and he couldn't speak English that well, but people loved him and he got his point across. He really simplified art for me. He broke it down into very, very simple stages. And when I started surfing, that's when my life changed because I asked him to show me how to paint the wave. I wanted to recreate that feeling of paddling, seeing something out in the horizon, and then turning around, catching it, and being lifted, carried by it, and taken all the way into shore. It, it felt like being Aladdin on a magic carpet ride. I think that that's the feeling that I wanted to remind myself whenever I painted a piece. So he showed me how to paint the ocean the best way that he could. At the age of 17, I became a teacher and I also graduated high school and was attending college to learn more about the art field. I wanted to take up all the classes that I may have missed or I needed to build a foundation in art. So classes like airbrushing, live figure drawing, watercolor, sculpture, uh, graphic design, museum, art hanging and techniques, and photography. I basically took everything I could because I loved art so much that at some point I really just wanted to work in the field. I had never heard of a professional artist before, so I always thought that you worked in the field, did what you could, whatever you could to pay the bills, and then you did your art on the side, and if you taught a few students here and there and shared the art, that would have been a perfectly fine life. Well, I was well on my way to doing so until I met an artist named Wyland. He was very determined to showcase his art and also bring the message of environmentalism and sea conservation to the world. I was asked to join his galleries at a very early age and I was exposed to all kinds of people right off the bat. I traveled with him for close to 30 years and that is where I stand today. I like to break my work down into certain series because it's really too hard to describe everything that I love doing. I mean traditionally the work that has garnered me the attention of the art world has been my traditional work. That involves the purity of the ocean and coupled with 
the topography of palm trees or of island bluffs or even architectural imagery in the background. Uh, sometimes the exotic draping of lava coming into the ocean. Those are all the traditional subjects that I choose to keep my, I would say, my artistic diet going. The way that lights reflect on water can be translated in many ways. It could be a rainy night, it could be a lake reflection, ripples from a wake on a yacht or a cruise ship. All those things mean the same thing to me. How do I portray them? Well, I like to think that I do it artistically enough to satisfy the left brain that says, hey, that looks real, but the, it speaks to the right brain, which is the heart, and says, wow, I feel that. I, I can really totally feel that painting. Now, the black and white series started off in photography. I took my first classes in black and white and progressed on to color, but there was a certain charm about black and white. My father used to tell me that, son, if you cannot control the values and you cannot make light speak with black and white, then color will not save you. Color is just a way to provide a three-dimensional scope to the mood but lighting will show you foreground, middle ground, background. It can create distance, it can create volume and shapes, and sometimes it can just really lift the spirit up. I like to think that the black and white series is part of a dream series, and whereas everything remains very neutral, very nostalgic because of the black and white, but when you use that pop of color, wow, that really puts a statement on. I feel like it could be, um, you know, a, a black tie affair and you have one little emerald handkerchief or a little rose uh, handkerchief or a, a tie. It really says, hey, I want you to focus on this color because this color means something to me. Sometimes. Colors mean peace, like the emerald waters and that beautiful green that you see shining through the wave. Other times it can be very symbolic, like the hot pink and magentas of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's just a way of being able to say and punctuate the most important thing in the painting but yet keep everything quiet so all of the attention goes where it needs to go. I never in my life would have imagined that one day I would become a Disney legacy artist. Who would have thought that uh, I would have had the opportunity to create a backdrop for Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Donald and all of the characters to be able to live in my art. Now I love the parks, I love the movies, my children have grown up around the Disney world and the fanfare and it really to me puts time in a bottle. Working with Disney has made it feel like you can keep the childlike innocence in your heart for as long as you live. So I see grown-ups now taking their kids who were once the kids to the same parks, to the same attractions, watching classic movies together and being a kid through their own kids eyes.
Now, koho wood is a very, very culturally treasured wood. The word itself means warrior, strength, and courage in the Hawaiian language. And in the old days, the ali'i, which the royals used it for their surfboards, their canoes, their paddles, um, their, their weapons, uh, their calabashes, so it was basically uh, the most sacred of woods. They, they used it for war and peace and entertainment. Um, as the missionaries came, they started using the wood more and more for flooring and furniture and all the traditional uses. So, also competing with the farmlands, a lot of the forests were cut down for grazing of the animals. So that really dwindled the supply and I'm really glad that it's illegal to cut down Hawaiian koa now. It can only be gotten through um, natural harvesting if a tree falls or if it's diseased or dying. And sometimes we have tropical storms and hurricanes that takes down a, you know, a big established tree, not just koa but many other woods. But when they do fall, people look, go after them to make things like jewelry, musical instruments, um, you know, anything, furniture, anything that they can make that carries the mana or the spirit of Hawaii. Hawaiians believe all living creatures have spirit and mana, so the spirit of the wood really translates into the work that I do. I, I can call it a true collaboration with nature because the caramel tones and the, the beautiful grain are too beautiful to paint over. So I try to leave areas so that you can see the wood and you can see where I come in and try to blend them seamlessly so that it feels like it was meant to go together, like butter and toast, and gin and tonic, and peanut butter and jelly. Take it easy. In the early stages of my development, I wanted to do portraits, and I also liked doing nature. But I was told that you should specialize in one so that you could put all of your attention, not just 50% of it, into what you're doing. Well, I realized early after doing portraits that not everyone is happy with the way they look. They want things changed. Can you make my, my uh, eyes bigger, different color, my nose smaller? my physique uh, curvier. So I, I realized that even though I like doing the likeness of things and people, I didn't want to be told what to do. And I knew that nature would never tell you what to do. If you wanted to convey anger, you could do uh, lightning scenes, you can do peace with moonlights, but in portraiture and figurative work, the figure itself is the main attraction. I started with Madame Pele and I did a portrait of her in lava that would appear to have come in random and just happened to create the silhouette of the shape. And in many photographs she's been captured with that same essence. So after that what I did was I went to a show in Key West called Fantasy Fest and started doing live figurative painting in that lava style. It really caught on because not only were the colors striking and very bold and fire-like, but I didn't paint the eyes or the feature so that you couldn't tell who it was and what their personality was. You were only um, captivated by the the silhouette and the figure. I believe that it borders on sensuality, not sexuality. I remember 
words that my father taught me many years ago. He said, son, I used to be an artist, but now I'm a dad that paints. Well, these words have resonated with me as I've had the pleasure of being both. Having lived a majority of my life in these Hawaiian islands, I am reminded about the special beauty and the mana and the energy that comes from this place. People come from all over the world to create their treasured memories with their families and their loved ones. And every moment that goes by is something that they'll remember forever. I hope that when you look at my art, you feel the same inspiration that I've received from this very special place that I call home. And as I continue to travel and paint the different parts and beauties of this gorgeous world, there's nothing more special than coming home to the beauty of these islands. Until we meet again, ahui ho and mahalo for taking time out to share my art and my story. Aloha.